And this here is a prototype of my high voltage distribution box. Um, I bought myself four uh, bars of uh, copper. They're 12 centimeter by 2.5 centimeter by 1 centimeter and they will be placed around here. So there will be no enough space for gland nuts and the cable shoe. I will have to use some distance bolts or uh, distance construction and resin to put everything on the same height. So I can use copper bars to attach the, the contactors to the copper bars and also this uh, shunt. Then I will use the, some uh, special resin. It's called polyurethane plastotherm 130. It's specially for um, electronic parts. It has uh, very high resistance and stays uh, a bit flexible. It's not as hard as uh, standard polyurethane resin because if it's too hard it might break or break loose and a somewhat elastic resin will be better. This is the hardener and there we have some uh, color a red one for the positive part and a black one for the negative part. So in order to create some uh, power distribution bars. I'd like to show you how I do my El Cheapo edition. Um, usually when you buy one in a store it costs about 90, 80, 90 dollars uh, but there's a way to do them much cheaper. I bought a bar of uh, copper at their metal shop and had it cut into uh, pieces of the correct size, length. Added a middle line here and made some marks for the uh, holes which go in there. Bought some M8 screws, some copper washers which go between the copper bar and the screw, so it will be like this. I think the distance between the holes is about 2.5 centimeters, so sorry for that. This has to be enough so, so you can put two locks between. Uh, so two locks have enough space. So here. some grinding with a real grinding machine it looks uh, like a perfect flat surface also with some new copper washers the power bar is almost finished so you see how quickly this can be done Oops, sorry. So the next step in uh, getting this power distribution bar ready is to cast it into resin. This is the shunt and I just use the shunt to hold everything in place because it's actually hovering on a few plastic tips which I just cut to the right size. So in the end this bar and the shunt will be on level so I can connect it through this uh, copper bar. 
So what did we do? Uh, the plastic is just cut from an old CD cover. I put two under it with a and connected this with some some adhesive tape. Then uh, on the left and on the right side, I'm going to add these hollow aluminum uh, pieces. So that's where the screws to attach the bar in the uh, to something else will go through. This will also indicate the the level of resin. It will go up into the middle of the the power bar. This piece was cut from a rod. The encasing here for casting the resin is made of this this hard PVC polyvinyl chloride plate. I was able to cut it with a with a pocket knife. Here. What else? Ah, yeah. You saw probably the the rest of a candle. I used it to. I rub all the inside of this um, PVC frame. So I'll show you what it takes to cast this one into resin. Uh, first, gloves. I tried this without gloves when I, I cast my JLD 404 into a form. It was a big mess. Uh, mixing pot, something to stir. Uh, ready set of clean towels. Um, here I prepared the, the rods that go inside. Just make sure that you fill it with uh, some paper. It's much easier to take out the paper than the resin once it, it got inside. Um, of course you need to measure it and uh, position it uh, precisely in the middle. So I made sure that it's uh, correctly aligned here and here. I uh, used some adhesive tape to uh, mount everything. So let's get ahead and pour it together. It says first mix everything very well. And from an early test yesterday I found out that it's best to use about you see it's quite liquid. It's best about to use 120 milliliter of resin. So this goes in here now. That's actually the nasty stuff here. It says you should not even breathe in. This piece, some uh, this this hardener. And then I start mixing it. From this point on I have about 23 minutes to keep it inside the pot. That's the, the consistency of honey, the liquid honey, you know. <coughs> so, here in it goes. Can you see? Yeah, you can see. Yeah. That's quite a critical part if I if it falls down, it's going to be a big mess. If it's not perfectly positioned, that's not a problem. I'll show you how I use the screwdriver to move it around. First, they have to go down to the floor. Stay upright. Now I see how much resin is missing. The rest until they are both 
and the resin comes up to the end of these sticks, of the spacers. Mm. So now I have to li align them in the middle from uh, between he this wall here and also of course in, in align it with the, the screws here. So what I do is I just use the screwdriver to move it around, turn it a bit to move it on one side and that's until it's well aligned it's not in the middle yet. So here we go. Then one thing you have to do is you see there are some bubbles appearing here, there will be more as the, the, the thing stands still so what I do I just use the tip of the screwdriver to rip the bubble open, so this you can do for about another 10 minutes. And here is the finished product, this one with red color added and uh, after doing it several times I found out if you pour it in only on, on one side it's much easier, less hassle and less cleanup to do afterwards. It makes a difference, a big difference if you put a lot of wax on it or not. Uh, if you have a lot of wax on it, it just peels off. Otherwise you have to, to nearly rip it apart. Yeah. Once this is free, it goes into the my high voltage distribution box, which looks like this, more or less. It's missing plates so on the right side, I'll have um, negative terminals. On the left side, it's the positive. Here is the entry. Uh, HV entry, this will be the main contactor, this will be the uh, heating contactor, pre-charge resistor and then the, the next red bar will go here and from here directly out the, the motor to the motor controller and the rest will go to the fuse boxes and it's four fuse box, one for the DC-DC, charger, um, heating and the JLD-404 20, 20, 20 amps and 5 amps and then when they come out on this side join the cable together with the, the negative side and uh, here in this area we'll have uh, some cable exits so two big ex entries here for negative and positive and two big ones here positive for the motor negative for the motor and then a few small ones for the the other devices I'll spare you the, the disassembly of this, so it's really not that interesting, yeah? Yeah, but it's, I think it's really looking nice, especially the red ones, I think they're quite unique. You can see them anywhere else. You can, if, you, if you're good with the uh, mirror writing, you can uh, inscribe something. You probably ask yourself, uh, why is he using bare copper? And why is it still so shiny? Once you touch it, with fing uh, leave fingerprints and leave it on, on air, uh, about one, two or three weeks later it will have a layer of oxidized uh, copper. Uh, to prevent that I use this contact spray. It is a, a lube and corrosion protection for electric contacts. Uh, once of course I am going to at such a log, I will use some uh, alcohol or benzene to, to clean the surface. And this is what it's going to look like uh, with the copper bars connecting the main entrance from the battery to the main contactor and up to the distribution bar. Here the holes were not drilled yet for the, the copper bar for the heating system and the same for the, the negative side shunt, uh, first distribution bar then probably we have a connection here to a uh, quick charge block and here the contactor, uh, the copper bar to the, to the bus bar uh, where we have the distribution of all the things. Also here no holes were drilled yet so I think we'll cut it here and I'll show you a final version of the box with all the holes drilled, with all the cables in it. Uh, it's going to get a clear cover. Uh, such a beauty has to be shown off, I think. <laughs> it's a bit uh, bling, self made bling. Um, yeah. When I stay, bye bye, thanks.